There are over a thousand aromatic rice varieties, but only a handful of those varieties can be called basmati. Basmati rice distinguishes itself as a white pearl. Advances in agricultural science have transformed this grain. From gunny bags to sealed packages you can trust. Basmati has undergone a revolution, making India the number one exporter of this wonder rice in the world. This is the story of an ancient yet modern grain. This is the story of Basmati, the god of grains. Basmati is an ancient grain of India. Its name comes from two Sanskrit root words, Vas, which means aroma, and Matup, which means ingrained. But why is Basmati so special? How are the finest grains of Basmati grown? How is Basmati milled to perfection? And how did this ancient grain go from food for a select few to a major commodity that India exports to the rest of the world, making a significant contribution to the country's foreign exchange reserves. The answers lie in the fields, in a sliver of land in northern India. It also lies in the world's largest rice milling plant run by KRBL, the leading branded basmati producer and the largest exporter of basmati in the world. A company that modernized Basmati and created brands like India Gate and Noor Jahan. Basmati has several characteristics that make it special. It is long when harvested and grows even longer when cooked. It is the only grain in the world which elongates three to four times of its original length. Basmati is soft to chew. Yet, each grain remains separate on the plate. A delight for the eyes as well as the taste buds. And of course, it has a distinctive earthy aroma. Basmati also has a geographical indication tag. This means only those Basmati varieties grown in a specified region of India can be termed Basmati. That region in India covers a small portion of the Indo-Gangetic Plain. It includes Punjab, Haryana, Western UP, Delhi, Himachal Pradesh, and parts of Uttarakhand and Jammu. Soil and mineral-rich water in this region supply a unique combination of nutrients to the Basmati crop. But it is the climate conditions in this region that play a vital role in bestowing basmati with its distinct earthy aroma. Basmati gets its signature aroma from one key molecular compound called 2-acetine-1-pyrrolene. If the temperature is too high, this compound escapes from the standing crop into the air. That's why basmati needs a cool temperature around the time it is ready for harvest. And that temperature is available only in the Indo-Gangetic Plain. Most of our say Basmati varieties, they come to flowering in the first week of uh, October, when the temperature is most congenial. While Basmati has been cultivated in India for centuries, it wasn't as widely available as it is today. The earliest recorded mention of Basmati was in the epic Punjabi tale, Heer Rancha which was written in 1777 by Varis Shah. In earlier times, Basmati was considered an item of luxury and grown for royalty. It was a notoriously difficult crop to grow, which made it extremely expensive. So the traditional varieties of Basmati rice, like uh, Basmati 370, Type 3, Dehradun Basmati, Arthraudi Basmati for that matter, uh, these are pretty tall in height, about uh, 1.5 meters. When crops are tall, they are more likely to fall over when there is a strong wind. This is called lodging. Lodged crops don't develop properly. They are prone to infections and are difficult to harvest. The result? 
traditional basmati had a very poor yield. And they take about 150 to 160 days uh, from seed to seed maturity. That means the crop is in the field for five months or more, thus making the traditional varieties extremely water intensive. Things changed starting in the late 1960s. That's when the Indian Agricultural Research Institute, popularly known as the Pusa Institute, scientifically developed newer varieties of Basmati under the leadership of Dr. V.P. Singh, who was awarded the Padma Shri by the President of India. The challenge was to retain the quality, make them semi-dwarf, study them non-lodging. Then only it will be useful to the farmers. In the early 2000s, the institute released a variety of basmati rice called Pusa 1121. The 1121 was a sturdier crop. It also matured faster. In 140 days, as opposed to traditional basmati, which took 160 days. This meant lesser water usage, since the crop could be harvested much earlier. One kilo of traditional basmati paddy requires 5,000 litres of water. On the other hand, one kilo of 1121 paddy requires just 1,000 litres of water. Moreover, it gave a much higher yield than traditional basmati. Farmers got 12 tonnes of 1121 paddy for one hectare of land, as compared to 2.5 tonnes of traditional basmati paddy per hectare of land. Its length and aroma were much superior to that of traditional basmati. This meant a much longer grain and pleasing taste for consumers. However, in spite of the superior qualities of Pusa Basmati 1121, the farmers would accept it only if there were buyers. Only one company saw the full potential of Pusa 1121 and took on this challenge. That company is KRBL. The year 2000, Dr. V.P. Singh gave us two kilo of Pusa double one two one. He said, it is a new seed. We have developed it, please test it. We milled one kilo, polished it. We saw a potential. This is the future of India. Anil Kumar Mittal, the chairman and managing director of KRBL, decided to bet big on Pusa 1121. Shri Anil Kumar Mittal played a very vital role in popularizing Pusa Basmati 1121. Ironically, the length of the 1121 grain threw up a unique problem. The longer grain made it more susceptible to breakage during processing. Because the machinery was not designed to mill 8.35 mm grain, we lost too much money in 2005, 2006. We were making a head rise of 35 kilo. Today I am making a head rise of 45 kilo. But you learn when you lose. Head rice refers to the grain that retains its full length after milling. Broken rice has less value than full grain rice. So he had to redesign those mills, invest in processing it to minimize the damage because that would reduce the quality of grain. KRBL approached Bueller, a Swiss engineering company, to design machines that would reduce broken grains. Today, Basmati rice exports in India is about 4 million tons, which generates revenue of about $3.5 billion. Even 1.5% increase in the yield contributes to closer to $50 million additional revenue. And that revenue through savings is crucial for KRBL, which is the largest exporter of Basmati in the world. In 2018, KRBL exported 1,68,000 tons of basmati to markets that demand the highest quality. As far back as in 2005, KRBL realized that quality would come not just from the machines in their mills, but also from farmers themselves. That investment had to be supported by incoming materials. Otherwise, you invest in big things, the paddy would not be available to you to process it that way. That would be a waste of expenditure. KRBL reached out to farmers. They first developed the foundation seeds given by Pusa 
and started distributing the seeds to farmers. But even as farmers and consumers were introduced to the wonder that was Pusa 1121, importers, especially Europeans, refused to give the grain the status of basmati. The importers insisted that for any variety to be called basmati, one of the immediate parents had to be a traditional basmati. Pusa 1121 derived its genes from its ancestors, that is traditional basmati. However, none of its immediate parents were traditional basmati. When I heard that, it was really hitting at the core of science of genetics. The genes, it does not matter whether it originated in the grandparent or great-grandparent or anyone, as long as it was intact, transmitted from generation to generation. In 2005, Indian agricultural scientists, led by Dr. Prabhu, decided to lay down a scientific definition for basmati. The length should be 6.61 to 7.5 millimeters or more. Its length to width ratio should be more than three, which means the grain needs to be slender. The color is a translucent creamy white. On cooking, its length should increase by two times or more. The cooked rice should also be fluffy, the grains separate. And finally, it should have a distinct aroma. And Pusa 1121 met all the criteria. By 2008, it was notified as Basmati. When the definition was changed, the value of Basmati 1121 from 11 to 12,000, it rose to 24 to 28,000 per ton in single day. While scientists were arguing their case for a clear definition of Basmati, KRBL grew its stock of Pusa 1121 seed from 1 kilo to 15,000 tons. As a result, as soon as the definition was notified, KRBL was positioned ahead of its competitors to boost the Basmati trade in the overseas markets to new heights. And today you see 70% of the Basmati crop is double one to one. Even today, KRBL continues to support Basmati farmers in Punjab by offering them guidance on best practices to grow Basmati. Harbant Singh started growing sugarcane as a youngster. Later, he switched to growing strawberries, which fetched a good price in Delhi. But then, things went awry. Harbant Singh got in touch with KRBL, who were willing to offer him the know-how to grow basmati. Like many farmers in the region, Harbant Singh is reaping the benefits of Pusa Basmati 1121. With varieties like the 1121, Basmati has become a truly modern agricultural produce. It also sealed India's leadership status in the global Basmati trade. But growing great Basmati is only the first of many steps involved in getting the finest grains on your plate. Up next, we see how companies like KRBL select the finest Basmati grains. Punjab. 
home to KRBL's massive milling plant that is spread over 200 acres. KRBL has the capacity to process 1.2 million ton of paddy every year, making it the largest rice miller in the world. KRBL processes only one variety of rice, the god of grains, basmati. But before the grains can be processed, they must first be procured. Basmati harvesting period starts from October to December. It is a 90-day cycle. So all our procurement of 1.2 million tons has to happen in these 90 days. 1.2 million ton is equivalent to the weight of 120 Eiffel Towers. And to procure such a mammoth amount of basmati, preparations start at least a month before they harvest. Teams from KRBL fan out in basmati growing regions, going from farm to farm to check the basmati crop. How healthy is the grain? What is the maturity level of the grain? And pre-buying tests are carried out. KRBL identifies key basmati growing areas where the basmati is of the highest quality. The team finalizes its plan before the paddy is harvested and starts pouring into the mandis. Procurement starts on a war footing. You are only purchaser. We have to fight with the several people. But we decided that we have to buy this mandi. So we have Around 100 purchasers from KRBL spread across Mondays. The purchaser has to bid for various batches and procure the best paddy in a matter of seconds. Paddy ko dekhna hai, usa green check karna hai. Uski opposition ye bhi hai ki is paddy ko apne wo hath mein dalke. ये बता सकता है कि इस पैड़ी के अंदर ये लिख आएगी, इस पैड़ी के अंदर मोटा मोटी वो ये भी देखके बता सकता है, सर इस पैड़ी में इतना ब्रोकन आएगा आएगा। Purchasers have decades of experience under their belts, which has sharpened their senses. Their judgments need to be absolutely accurate, because it not only determines the procurement cost for KRBL, but also the ultimate quality of basmati that reaches the consumers. The action now shifts to the KRBL's mill, where trucks line up with the purchased paddy. We have about 700 trucks on an average, arriving at a factory every day. So it is a big chaos. During the procurement period, over 60,000 trucks move in and out of KRBL. If all these trucks were to line up together, then they would go all the way from Dhuri to New Delhi, a distance of around 337 kilometers. The unloading speed is crucial, but before that... We physically check the quality of the paddy and one sample goes to a lab for testing. The procurement lab is like a miniature version of the mill. Their job is to evaluate if the basmati samples that come through their doors are fit to face the rigors of a mill. First, a machine measures moisture of the paddy. A moisture of below 15% is ideal because grains with higher moisture are more susceptible to breakage. The grains are then heated to reduce the moisture to below 12% and then dehusked. When the basmati grain come out minus the husk, technicians measure what percentage of grains are broken. Lesser the number of broken grains, better the quality of paddy. Next, the grains are visually examined the number of discolored green 
and immature grains are recorded. These grains are separated and rejected as waste at the milling stage. A perfect quality of paddy where the broken percentage is less. The green kernel is under 3 to 4 percent, where the immature is about say 1 percent. Good grains are then put into a scanning machine, which gives a reading on the average length and width of the sample. The lab conducts 15 tests on each sample. That is 10,500 tests every day. The lab then generates a report, which determines how a particular batch of paddy will be processed. Yes, a diamond wala dekhta na, a diamond kaisa hai. Once we get a green signal from our lab, the paddy is unloaded in exactly half an hour. That is nearly 30,000 kilos of paddy unloaded. Moreover, it's not about simply unloading sacks. Like purchasers, unloaders have to make a rapid assessment. They need to check if the sacks of rice in the truck is of the same quality as the sample. The unloaded basmati batches are stacked in godowns or in the open, covered with tarpaulin sheets. The paddy will eventually be taken off for processing through the year. Basmati, the god of grains, is grown just once a year. KRBL, the largest miller of basmati in the world, procures and stores 1.2 million tonne of paddy in just three months. But the milling plant is operational 24-7, 365 days a year. We have the capacity to process 80,000 bags of paddy every day. That is about 4 million kilos of paddy. That is more than the average rice eaten by all the people of Mumbai in one meal. There are two types of milling carried out in KRBL's plants. Raw rice milling and bar boiling. Grains that can handle the rigour of milling without breakage are categorised as raw rice. Grains that need to be cooked in large quantities along with meat, like in a biryani, need to be strengthened. They then undergo the parboiling process before milling. The process begins by cleaning the paddy, removing grit and other impurities. The batch selected for raw basmati is sent for milling. However, the batch selected for parboiling needs to undergo steaming and soaking in water before it can be milled. The process starts by transferring the cleaned paddy to huge vessels where it is steamed. In Hindi language, we call it kachi. Kachi karna. Kachi karna se kya hota hai? Steam uske andar jab jati hai, wo chilke ko porous kar deti hai. Ki maximum wo pani absorb kare. After steaming, we put the paddy in the water for six to eight hours. Those ke cracks hain, wo pani ne usko 100% jor diya. Then after his major thing is drying. Once the drying is complete, the parboiled basmati is ready for milling. Parboiled basmati can be cooked for longer hours at higher temperatures and still retain its shape and fluffiness. That makes parboiled basmati the grain of choice for biryani in the Gulf countries like UAE, Oman and Saudi Arabia. The process of milling is same for raw and parboiled rice. 
At this stage, basmati has three main components, the outer husk, the bran and the kernel. The husk is removed first in the de-husking unit. Next, the bran layer of the basmati is removed. This makes the rice whiter and will yield a softer texture when the rice is cooked. From this stage, parboiled rice is sent directly for grading. Meanwhile, raw rice is sent for aging. Basmati raw rice ko premium banane ke liye sabse zaruri hai aging. Aur basmati jo old rice ka fashion hai India se start hua. Kyunki log basmati khana chahte hain khula khara green, fluffiness green. The secret of how aging transforms the basmati grains lies at the molecular level. The starch in rice has two components. One is amylose, another is amylopectin. It is the intricate balance of amylose and amylopectin that decides the cooking quality of rice. Less than 20% amylose makes the rice sticky when cooked. More than 25%, the rice remains hard when cooked. The sweet spot, an amylose content of 20 to 25%. Basmati falls in this sweet spot, which makes it fluffy. Its grains don't stick to one another. But as we store and age the rice, the amylose molecules, they go under changes. And that leads to uh, rice cooking in a fluffy manner, higher volume expansion, no stickiness. The difference between aged and non-aged rice becomes apparent when you take 200 grams of each. Soak them in water for the same amount of time. And then cook in the exact same manner. The cooked aged rice can now fill 4.5 bowls. Whereas the non-aged rice fills just 3.75 bowls and the weight of the cooked rice aged 678.5 grams, non-aged 464.2 grams. The length of the cooked aged rice is 22 millimeters, while the length of the cooked non-aged rice is 16.5 millimeters. However, aging rice is a tedious and expensive process. In aging, you require two things. One is warehouse, and second is finance. KRBL started with warehouses of 10 to 15,000 square feet. Today, we have about 2.8 million square feet of warehouses. These warehouses are filled with basmati in gunny bags. Every batch is aged for two years, and they need constant care. That's why KRBL doesn't outsource the storage to any external warehouses and maintains full control over the aging process. The grains are regularly inspected by KRBL teams. They take note of the temperature and humidity fluctuations and keep the godown aerated to ensure the basmati remains healthy as it ages. Once the aging is complete, the basmati is ready for polishing. There are four stages of polishing as the grains are slowly given the silky, pale white color that we all instantly recognize as basmati. And to ensure that only grains with these attributes make it into the packs of India Gate basmati, KRBL's quality control teams conduct tests on the grains every hour. The samples are randomized before tests are carried out. Milling is a very rigorous process. If the tip of the grain is broken, the grain will not achieve a perfect length after cooking. So that's why we check the length and the pin broken of the grain. The samples are put through a machine called the Rice Whiteness Tester, which measures the whiteness of the rice in terms of a unit called KET. India Gate Classic, we had a CAT percentage of 
The percentage of rice with the perfect whiteness level is shared with the milling team, which sets the polishing process accordingly. The cooking test is the most important of all. Where we see if the grain is getting elongated, the fluffiness is there, the grain is absorbing more water, and the grain has a perfect bite. Individual grains from the cooked sample are separated and studied to note the number of grains that have broken, burst, or curled during cooking. If the percentage of broken, burst, or curled is high, the milling team is immediately informed in order to tweak their settings. All the grains finally go through a machine called the Color Sortex, which comes equipped with an advanced scanner. The operator first enters a threshold for various color parameters of the basmati grains. And then the machine starts scanning the grains at an incredible speed of 2.4 million grains every second. That is 100 kilos of rice scanned for quality every minute. The machine separates the grains that fall below the thresholds set by the KRBL team. Each grain is thus scanned by KRBL and only the finest grains make their way to packaging and dispatch to millions of consumers across the world. Today, the name Basmati is strongly associated with India. But not too long ago, we nearly lost our claim on this ancient grain. In the late 1990s, a US company called Rice Tech was granted a patent for a variety of aromatic rice. The patent was so broad that only rice developed by Rice Tech could be called Basmati in the US. The Indian government fought back the challenge of rice tech in global forums such as the World Trade Organization. Back in India, the rice tech incident highlighted the importance of protecting India's agricultural produce and branding it. Until then, KRBL had focused solely on bulk supplies and export of basmati. KRBL had started Basmati exports in 1985 with a small order of 1,000 tons from the UAE. Over the next few years, KRBL developed a strong network of distributors in 82 countries across the world. When we went to the retail market, we found the retailers are selling products in loose gunny bags and consumer is not getting what we are selling. I think at that time, 90% of the consumer was not getting the, what the real basmati is. In 1998, KRBL launched its India Gate brand. Indian basmati now had an identity. In 2001, India won its case in the global forums and Rice Tech's patent was made much narrower in its scope. Basmati's status as an Indian grain was firmly protected. Around this time, KRBL turned its attention to the domestic market. In India, KRBL knew that simply taking rice out of gunny bags and putting it in shiny packaging wouldn't be enough to sway consumer perception. They had to taste the difference. They held biryani melas across India and got the Indian consumer to experience their longer, fluffier and more aromatic grains. KRBL started advertising in news channels, which were watched by retailers. They emphasized on their quality and the fact that India Gate Basmati was aged to perfection. When we are advertising, 
whenever the consumer takes the rice, he was finding something very different. You will be surprised to note when people saw the rice, they say it's a Rolls Royce of Basmati rice. It was a game changer and a turning point for India Gate brand. The next step was to widen its appeal. We have been able to identify distinct categories of consumer requirements so that a customer is not taking a particular variant of India Gate Home, but we are giving a range of products to the customers. KRBL's flagship brand, India Gate Classic, was full grain basmati aged for two years. It's the perfect grain for special occasions. However, KRBL decided to create new brands for basmati grains that would break during the milling process. Majority of the consumers like the taste of basmati, but even if the basmati is broken, the taste is there. So we started marketing our product with broken basmati rice. This gave rise to the daily use range of India Gate Basmati, which included Tibar, which is three-fourth the size of full-grain Basmati, and Dubar, which is half the size of full-grain Basmati. KRBL also introduced specialty rice, meant for specific cooking requirements. Unity is perfected for biryanis, while sweet indulgence is small-grain Basmati for sweet dishes. The result? The company leads sales in both small-scale and large-scale retail markets. We have 484 distributors from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. Geographically, there is not a place where India Gate Basmati rice is not present. From a grain meant only for royals, modern-day companies like KRBL brought Basmati to the masses. However, a large chunk of KRBL operations remain unseen to the consumer. Today, Basmati companies produce so much more than just Basmati. And like the produce itself, the business starts from the seed. That's why KRBL thought of providing the best quality seeds to the farmers in order for KRBL to get the good quality input of paddy from the farmers. KRBL's seed operations is among the largest in India. It has around 700 acres of farms where the company collaborates with farmers to grow basmati seeds in sufficient quantities. The seeds then make their way to the mill. We have a seed plant at our Ghaziabad unit where we grade the seed, we sort the seed. The seed plant has a gravity selector which removes the lighter grains. So the lighter grains will not germinate. So we remove them from the uh, grading process and take only the heavier grains, which ensure 100% germination to the power. The seeds are then medically treated and supplied to over 70,000 farmer families across Basmati growing regions. We are proud to claim that we have 15% market of the Basmati seed sales in India. Apart from seeds, KRBL has also set up infrastructure to process byproducts of milling operations. This includes husk and bran of basmati. In earlier time, husk, which accounts for between 20 to 24 percent of the total weight, it was thrown. And there was a time when millers used to pay money to remove that waste. But time has changed. Husk, fortunately, has got an extra valuable nutritional ingredient that has got a lot of energy in it. That ingredient? A chemical agent called farfaral, which is used extensively in the oil refining and pharma industries. After this extraction, the husk is further used as fuel to generate steam. A part of the steam generated is used for parboiling paddy and the majority is used as fuel in KRBL's power plants that supply electricity for its plant operations at Ghaziabad and Dhuri. We are able to produce around 15 megawatts at our two locations.
like husk, Basmati brand too was once a low-value byproduct used only for cattle feed. Today, rice bran oil is in demand for its nutritional value. But to get the best quality rice bran oil, it is important to extract the oil from the bran as soon as possible. That is no problem for KRBL's fully integrated infrastructure which has an in-house bran oil extraction plant. Once the oil is extracted, the remaining bran is caked and supplied in the market as cattle feed. Thus, there is zero waste at KRBL's operations which contributes to the company's business. And that is important to withstand challenges and grab opportunities in the future. But what are these challenges and opportunities? We will see that next. From a grain meant only for royalty to a modern commodity grown and processed scientifically, Basmati, the god of grains, has come a long way. But the future holds both promise and challenges. And no challenge is bigger than climate change. For the past few years, we have witnessed major weather fluctuations groundwater is reducing at a rapid rate across the world and productivity demands are only increasing. KRBL is working with agricultural scientists to create smarter basmati varieties. Varieties that require less water and can withstand pests and diseases. Such disease-resistant crops are healthier since they require little or no pesticides. KRBL is also investing in developing machines that are more efficient. See, at KRBL, we are learning every day. Basmati is a very delicate grain. It needs to be handled very carefully. We try to develop better milling techniques. So we have tied up with a company called Bueller, which uh, has partnered with us. One of the first mill set we made was for KRBL. They always wanted to look for newer solutions for efficiency improvements. The improved machines become more and more efficient in terms of the resources they consume. Wastage is reduced and the quality of the milled rice gets better. Consumers today want more than the best grains of basmati. In recent years, there is a growing demand for healthier options. KRBL responded by introducing a new product called the India Gate Weight Watchers Special Brown Rice. This product is mainly targeted to the calorie conscious urban consumer who might think twice before consuming a white rice, but we don't want to miss them out from our target audience. There's also a growing breed of consumers who want to know where the food they eat comes from. Now traceability has become a big issue. The customer globally wants to know where the product is coming from. KRBL uses an app called Smart Farm, which is used to record which fields each batch of rice is coming from. They have tied up with companies that have satellite coverage to monitor basmati crops. At crucial stages of crop development, the company suggests interventions for farmers that results in a better crop. We are closely working with companies where every bag of paddy that we process can be tracked at the farm level. These efforts mean that Basmati is equipped to meet the challenges of the 21st century. Newer varieties are robust enough for the changing global environment, while deployment of smart technology helps in meeting the demand of the more conscious, discerning consumer. 
So the next time you bite into a spoonful of fluffy aromatic basmati rice, remember the rich journey that the grains have taken to land up in your plate. Thanks to efforts of farmers, scientists and companies like KRBL, the signature basmati grains full of flavor and aroma are set to delight our senses for a long time to come.